This is Dabu7. We have things heating up big time between India and China. And China is saying that it looks like India doesn't want peace because they're seeing them amass a large number of troops on their side of the border, indicating that they are not interested in a peaceful resolution in this border standoff. And this is a very interesting situation. This is on the Himalayan plateau where the Chinese had started to build this road in an area of Doklam or Donglin. That's what the Chinese call it. They view this as their territory. This is right on the border of India and Bhutan. India is saying, no, no. What you're doing is you're preparing to try to come up here with your road and all your military troops, and you're getting ready to try to make a move or fortify a massive base in this region. And the only reason that you would do it is against us, is what India is saying. So they're saying, we're not stupid. We're making the moves now. You can say whatever you want. We're preparing, and they are. And this is pretty crazy because these are two BRICS partners. You had Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and the BRICS packed, so to speak. We all know that Russia and China has been huge allies. But now, out of nowhere, India and China, about they could go to big war over this. You're talking about two countries in this region that have the most amount of people that would be squaring off in the Himalayas. It's a pretty crazy situation, but it really looks like China's been making moves. Now, let's not get it twisted. China has been making moves all over the place. Look what they're doing here. Look what they've been doing out in the South China Sea. Look what they've been doing to all these little shoals that aren't even islands, building them up, claiming the territory, building runways, airstrips, and snatching it all up. They have claimed that parts of the South China Sea, where a lot of trade routes run through, is all theirs. All the way up to like a couple hundred miles off the coastline of, of like the Philippines. All the way down into that area. And the Philippines and other countries are like, no, it's not happening. There's going to be something go down with China. Guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you flat out. When it starts to hit the fan with China, that's when it's really going to start to go downhill in terms of a lot of different things. Look what Trump just did with the sanctions on Russia. If there was to be a trade war between China and the United States, you would see a massive deficit. Look, all the, all the shares and the influx here recently in Apple. Did you know that Apple has a big chunk of what it does based in China? All that would go away if Trump put a halt to it. It would stop dead in its tracks. All the electronics that, get, that come in cheap that fill the shelves in Walmart and everything else, you know, everything you've ever seen in this country that says made in China on the bottom of it. All that would be done. If they would suffer on the other side too, because they take in a massive amount of soybean product from our country, massive amount, and they depend on that to feed their people. So see, this is give and take here on this world stage in terms of countries that need certain things that other countries have. And when big war starts to break out, usually the first signs of it are trade war, economic war, and then that results and leads to bigger war. But India, a key player, this could be big. And this could uh, start a war front for China that China hasn't seen in some time. Because unlike R Russia or the United States, we are involved in these proxy wars like all over the place. China's been trying to make moves in Africa, believe it or not, for some time, building up bases there. But if they have to reorganize and focus on a new war front, that's going to change their strategy. Now, with everything I just said, with them creeping up on border areas all over the place, saying that every bit of the South China Sea is theirs, I find it interesting they don't seem to care much about North Korea. Tucked right up underneath of them, right there in the belly of them. I think China has more to do with what's going on in North Korea than what is being said. I think the United States knows this. I think it was strategy 
for Trump to have the dinner with Xi Jinping to try to get them involved in this, but China's done nothing. Trump said, China's doing nothing. We're going to have to make moves on our own. We're sending more THAADs in now. They keep popping off missiles. China doesn't seem to like that at all because it counters their own nuclear missile program. And to be honest with you, I think a lot of what's going on here is, is setting up to counter China. They are the biggest threat globally. I don't care what anyone says. They are. And in reality, if you could find a way to put a wedge between China and their biggest allies, that's when you start to cut them off and gain the upper hand. If that's, if that's happening right now with India, that's big time. They could break packs, break deals. If this leads to bigger war, a lot of things could fall apart. If that happens, others, other neighboring countries could fall along the same lines. What happens if Pakistan sides with China? Pakistan, India have not got along in the past. All of these countries, nuclear powers. You're talking about them all striking one another. How does that play out with nuclear weapons? Really, on the world stage, how does that play out? How can China strike a country that is upwind from them? How can you do that? How can you drop mushroom clouds of nukes in multiple cities or on the border anywhere in India without it blowing back into China? It's going to happen. And matter of fact, China actually warned North Korea of that same instance, that if anything happens because they provoked it or if they're building nukes and it gets bombed, anything blows back into China, that's when they would strike them. Now, China's been making huge moves. They have a massive amount of troops on the border with North Korea right now waiting for refugees to come in. They cut visas to South Korea because of the THAAD thing. Things really heating up here. And I think the THAAD system, all in all, even though it looks to be geared toward North Korea, THAAD can't stop the sh these, uh, these long rangers, is what they're saying. The THAAD is designed there to hit, to hit the short range ones out of the sky. They're saying that the long trajectory and the high arc of these inter intercontinental ballistic missiles they can't be stopped by that. Okay? They, they admit that. That's not what they were designed for. They weren't designed to take down those type of, of missiles coming in at that speed. So what do you do if China, from areas in their far north, start launching high arc ICBMs toward these regions? They couldn't stop them. But once again, what happens when those mushroom clouds start blowing back toward China. China has to take all that into consideration. There's literally certain areas they cannot nuke. They can't, because it would literally be like nuking themselves and all their people. Now, if you were to be India and you nuked Hong Kong, chances are that's not going to be blowing back in your face. But, I, I mean, a lot of things can happen here on this world stage. And something as important as just the direction of the wind on any given day could tell the tale of how many people live and die in a big war. And that's the truth. But things are heating up here on this world stage. Your mainstream evening news is scripted and only telling you a few things. Honestly, what are they telling you here about this stuff globally? Because I tune into different channels locally in the evening news. I have been here recently just to try to see what they're doing. And what I've noticed is, wow, there's like 15 minutes dedicated to sports, maybe 20 to weather, you know, because there's a first segment he comes on, and then he comes back on 15 minutes later for a few more minutes, and he comes back on about 10 more minutes before sports comes on at the end. And in the middle, they may say there was a shooting around town here and there, a couple local events they'll throw in there. Whatever they've got in the script with Trump. But nothing as far as 
this world stage and the wars that are breaking loose. Not a word of it. Nothing about what's going on in Afghanistan in the nightly. What's going on really in Libya since we toppled the government. None of it. So, a shout out to everybody out there that shares this information and that uh, gives us props, even those starting their new channels. Everyone that gives props where it's due and, and fights the good fight. Much respect and love. I'm going to leave a link for this and continue to talk about this tonight. Underground World News Live, Dabu777. Hope to see some of you guys over there. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Twitter as well for the latest updates. But this isn't something to uh, turn a cheek to. This is big time on the world stage between these two countries. It looks like it's heating up. Eyes open.